the grasshopper and the ant. One day in winter, a hungry grasshopper applied to an ant for some of the food which they had stored. Why, said the ant, did you not store up some food for yourself instead of singing all the time? So I did, said the grasshopper, so I did. But you fellows broke in and carried it all away. The Hare and the Tortoise A hare, having ridiculed the slow movements of a tortoise, was challenged by the latter to run a race, a fox to go to the goal and be the judge. They got off well together, the hare at the top of her speed, the tortoise who had no other intention than making his antagonist exert herself, going very leisurely. After sauntering along for some time, he discovered the hare by the wayside, apparently asleep, and seeing a chance to win, pushed on as fast as he could, arriving at the goal hours afterward, suffering from extreme fatigue and claiming the victory. Not so, said the fox. The hare was here long ago and went back to cheer you on your way. The Devoted Widow a widow weeping on her husband's grave was approached by an engaging gentleman who in a respectful manner assured her that he had long entertained for her in the most tender feelings. Wretch, cried the widow, leave me this instant. Is this a time to talk to me of love? I assure you, madam, that I had not intended to disclose my affection, the engaging gentleman humbly explained, but the power of your beauty has overcome my discretion. <laughs> you should see me when I've not been crying, said the widow. The Ingenious Patriot Having obtained an audience of the king, an ingenious patriot pulled a paper from his pocket, saying, May it please, your majesty, I have here a formula for constructing armor plating which no gun can pierce. If these plates are adopted in the Royal Navy, our warships will be invulnerable and therefore invincible. Here also are reports of your majesty's ministers attesting the value of the invention. I will part with my right in it for a million tum-tums. After examining the papers, the king put them away and promised him an order on the Lord High Treasurer of the Extortion Department for a million tum-tums. And here, said the ingenious patriot, pulling another paper from another pocket, are the working plans of a gun that I have invented, which will pierce that armor. Your Majesty's royal brother, the Emperor of Bang, is anxious to purchase it. But loyalty to your Majesty's throne and person constrains me to offer it first to your Majesty. The price is one million tum-tums. Having received the promise of another check, he thrust his hand and still into still another pocket, remarking, The price of the irresistible gun would have been much greater, Your Majesty, but for the fact that its missiles can be so effectively averted by my peculiar method of treating the armor plates with the new, the king signed the great head factotum to approach. Search this man, he said, and report how many pockets he has. Forty-three, sire, said the great head factotum, completing the scrutiny. May it please your majesty, cried the ingenious patriot in terror. One of them contains tobacco. Hold him up by the ankles and shake him, said the king. Then give him a check for 42 million tum-tums and put him to death. Let a decree issue, declaring ingenuity a capital offense. The Crimson Candle A man lying at the point of death called his wife to his bedside and said, I'm about to leave you forever. Give me, therefore, one last proof of your affection and fidelity. For according to our holy religion, a married man seeking admittance at the gate of heaven is required to swear that he has never defiled himself with an unworthy woman. In my desk you will find a crimson candle which has been blessed by the high priest and has peculiar mystical significance. Swear to me that while it is in existence you will not remarry. The woman swore, and the man died. At the funeral the woman stood at the head of the bier, holding a lighted crimson candle, till it was wasted entirely away. The Flying Machine An ingenious man who had built a flying machine invented a great concourse of people to see it go up. At the appointed moment, everything being ready, he boarded the car and turned on the power. The machine immediately broke through the massive substructure upon which it was built and sank out of sight into the earth, the aeronaut springing out barely in time to save himself. Well, said he, I've done enough to demonstrate the correctness of my details. The defects, he added, with a look at the ruined brickwork, are merely basic and fundamental. Upon this assurance, people came forward with subscriptions to build a second machine. <laughs>